My friends, I greet you with Islamic greetings. Salam alaikum. Peace be on to all of us. Before I read the message from Dr. Maher Hatut, the chairman of the Islamic Shura Council, allow me to share a few words. It is my honor to be here today to reaffirm the timeless and universal principle that greed is an abomination. And for those who believe in greed we trust, we are reminded in our scriptures a place for them. It's called hell. And in it they will rot forever. But for now, you and I have an obligation an obligation to stop this train of greed driven by the 1% that's wrecking havoc in our cities and hamlets of the 99%. My brothers and sisters of the Occupy Los Angeles, I stand in awe of you today for your sense of justice and deeds of compassion, for your infectious and refreshing way of life and struggle, and thank you for awakening this nation from being indifferent and numb to the social misery in our midst and for unleashing an ethical energy that can now and never be extinguished. The democratic vocation that now that you have undertaken may not guarantee victory, but please know that you have lifted up many meaningful probabilities in this country. And if we lose this precious democratic vocation, let it be said that the seeds you have planted in this grassless, grew, grassroots revolution will indeed flower and blossom for the dignity and honor of all people, including the 99%. Yeah. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, let me say a few words from Dr. Maher Hatut, who is a leading spokesperson for the Muslim community in America a retired physician, but best known for his tireless commitment to public service and to his faith of Islam. Dr. Hatut holds several offices, such as senior advisor to MPAC and currently the chairman of the Islamic Shura Council, an umbrella organization of mosques and Muslim organizations. And here is his message for us today. Sisters and brothers, peace be on to you. All who dedicate their efforts to give a voice for the voiceless majority in our country. All of you who chose to be on the side of the marginalized 99% of our people. All of you who will stand in peaceful and loving anger against the legacy of inequity and inheritance and indifference. I salute you, I envy you, and I am in prayer with all of you. I ask God to help us to be the agents of justice and to express our devotion to him in action for healing the broken hearts and to empower the seekers of truth. Amen. I'm here not to celebrate me, but to celebrate all of you. To celebrate you who have cried out with your hearts and your spirits, cried out to speak for the absence of justice in our country and in the world at large. So we link ourselves in being here in, in the same cause. But what you're saying by your being here, by being a part of Occupy Los Angeles, is that we all have an obligation to one another that none of us can be free, none of us can live in dignity, none of us can see a future for ourselves and for our offspring unless we stand together against the cruelties that have taken away our right to become more fully ourselves. So I'm here to celebrate you and to commend you for the courage that you've demonstrated in being here and, and to say again, that there is nothing radical, nothing whatsoever radical in wanting to see every human being, every human being live in dignity and in a community of justice. To be able to live a little life and die a little death close to someone who loves us, what's radical about that? Yes, nothing at all. That's right. And that's 
why we are here and why we are here to celebrate what it is that you're doing. Thank you so much. Well, I'm really proud to be here. It's wonderful to see you here and to know what you stand for. There's one thing that you can be sure of. The one percent One thing you can be sure of, the 1% loves a crisis. When government is in disarray, when people are panicked and dis desperate, when no one seems to know what to do, that is the time that the 1% push through their agenda, the corporate agenda, the, the agenda of greed privatizing education, low taxation on the wealth, on the wealthy, privatization of social security, slashing public services and forgetting the sick and the poor, getting rid of the regulators on banks and corporate powers, forgetting the wounded and the broken from the bank, from forgetting the wounded and the broken veterans. And there's only one thing that can block this tragic operation of the 1%, and that is you. That is the 99%. That means you. Yes, sir. It is Occupy Los Angeles. It is Occupy Wall Street. It is Occupy San Francisco. And I'm proud of what you're doing. You're not here today to grab a few headlines. You are not here and gone tomorrow. You are part of a movement, part of a movement that can transform America and transform the world. Occupy Los Angeles, occupy Wall Street. You are not beautiful flowers that quickly die off, flowers that can be washed away by a storm like today. There is something different about Occupy Los Angeles. The United States is no longer rich. It is a country with lots of rich and wealthy people. Ten or twelve years ago, taking on our economic system of inequality based on greed and the dominance of the military was a hard sell. We failed in these efforts of transformation. Today, a dynamic hope surrounds this movement, a movement linked across the globe the Occupy Movement, a fair, equitable distribution of the immense wealth of the world that leads to peace and health of the whole human family. I want to recommend to you three themes that I hope you will engage. Militarism. We must engage militarism, the dominance of war making. Four trillion dollars have been spent on the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. While 40 percent of the children in America live in poverty. That's the greatest obscenity of our day. You can't have the country you want until we see militarism grasp upon our heart, our lives, and our very being. Fifty percent, fifty percent of the federal budget goes to pay for wars in the past, wars today, and preparing for wars in the future. That is an obscenity. And the only reason we will have a compromise from that committee that is to recommend what to do about the economy by Monday or else 
there will be cuts across the board. The reason they won't, they will agree and not have cuts across the board is because the military will have to be cut so drastically. Never forget the power of the military on the life and being of this country and you who are in the streets of Los Angeles. And second, I want you to challenge the government's sense of false scarcity. False scarcity. Never give up on insisting on a good, great society for the 99%. Yes, sir. Some politicians have made public a word of disgrace. 99% know the public is what makes America the place we love. Public schools, public libraries, public parks, public highways, public goods and services. Occupy LA will stay with it and help create a fair society for people who are not rich. Don't be third misled by the vast superstructure of American life and politics. It's big, it's colossal, it's overwhelming. But everything comes back to the talent, the energy, and the sense of purpose of human beings like you. It all comes back to occupy Los Angeles. So God bless you and strengthen you for this hard task. We will have a day of victory.